Welcome to the EQFit Podcast. Our mission is to equip people to prosper in every aspect of their life. Whether you're at home or in the workplace, we explore practical ways of improving success, satisfaction, finding balance, and building enjoyable and beneficial relationships. Thank you for joining us. We are continuing our focus on different EQ, or Emotional Intelligence Life Skills, also skills for work, really skills for every part of our lives. I want to focus today on optimism. A definition from the online dictionary is an inclination to put the most favorable construction upon actions and events or to anticipate the best possible outcome. So I thought I would read that definition to help us get a sense of optimism from a a carefully defined perspective. But I think we all have our own definition of what optimism is and what optimism looks like. When you think of optimism, what comes to mind? Here's another question. Is it difficult for you to be optimistic? We see people who just seem to be optimistic all the time. The cynic in us calls them rose-colored glasses people. They're walking through life with rose-colored glasses. Everything's rosy, right? But They do seem happy. They do appear to enjoy their life and their work. Maybe we should all be more rose-colored glasses people. Why are they so optimistic? Do they have less challenges than we do? I don't think that's the case. I think they have at least the same amount of challenges and problems that we have. I think all of these questions that I'm asking are fair questions for each of us to answer. I believe most of us would like to be more optimistic. So what's the difference between people who are consistently optimistic and other people who are not? Well, before we get into that, I want to ask you to take a minute and rate your current level of optimism. So on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the highest possible level of optimism, where do you rate yourself? So keep that in mind as we go forward here. Now I want to talk about optimism in a little different way than you might be used to. I want you to think of it on two different levels. One is as a mindset, and the other is as a practice. And we're going to go into both of those in this episode. Now, if we base our level of optimism on external factors, so what would that look like? Our circumstances our finances, our relationships, our current level of control or influence that we have over different parts of our life. If we look at those things and we base the level of optimism that we have on external factors, we're probably going to be disappointed and have fairly low optimism consistently. The external factors, if you think about it, a lot of those are out of our control. They're not something that we can directly control. Certainly not our circumstances, the world around us. Sure, we control small things in all of that, but not a lot of things. So what do we do with this optimism thing? How do we figure out 
what optimism is to us, and then how do we practice optimism? How do we treat it as a mindset and a practice? Well, let me tell you a story that I think describes, at least opens the door to helping us understand this. I was talking to someone recently who is struggling with what most of us are struggling with. Waves of change, a lot of uncertainty, a great deal of anxiety, stress, and worry. As I listened to this person, it became clear that their optimism was very low. They just were very pessimistic, not very optimistic. Everything was a problem to them. People in their life were trouble and they were a pain to deal with. They fear more change since they have yet to figure out the changes that are already happening in their lives. I could see their desire to find peace in their life, but they had no idea how to achieve that, how to get the peace that they were looking for. So I ask a very simple question. What are you optimistic about? The immediate answer I got, and you can probably guess, Nothing. This person said, I am optimistic about nothing. So I asked the same question over again. What are you optimistic about? And after that initial look of frustration, and I'm sure them thinking, did you not hear me? Are you not speaking English or something? They really started to think about my question. And I could see that happening for this person. After a little bit of time, here's what they said to me. I'm optimistic about what I have accomplished and what I believe I can do in the future. Bingo. That's exactly where I wanted them to go. That was the moment that their focus shifted from external factors to internal resources, internal experiences, things that they can control. So when we think about what we can be optimistic about, it's a look into the future, but it's also a look into the past. Optimism is looking toward the future with hope and possibility. The interesting thing about this, you have to look to the past so that you can look to the future with optimism. Looking to the future without that is just wishful thinking. That is not true optimism. Optimism is based on an intentional choice grounded in our experiences, our accomplishments, our observations, our beliefs, our values, and our focus. In essence, optimism is built on the internal resources that you have created or that you have built within yourself. That is why when you feel tired and depleted, it is much more difficult to be optimistic. So when we talk about an optimistic mindset. It really is an intentional choice. But it goes beyond that. How do we reinforce and build up an optimistic mindset? By practicing optimism. Yes, optimism is a practice. It is a deliberate choice to approach situations with an optimistic mindset. How do we do that, though? Here are some suggestions, and here's just a few suggestions. Choose optimism over pessimism. Okay, I know you're probably looking at wherever you're listening to this on and going, really, seriously? But 
go beyond face value there. This may seem like a, a canned answer, but the reality is that you will approach every situation in your life with some level of optimism or pessimism. It is baked into who we are as human beings. Pessimism tends to limit you, to put you in a bad place in your mind, and it tends to keep you stuck. Don't confuse pessimism with skepticism. They are not the same thing. So choosing optimism over pessimism is being intentional about the mindset that you want to live in moving forward. Here's another idea. Look for the good that can come out of a situation. So many times we project ourselves into the future and we see negative outcomes. And you know what? Most of the time, the vast majority of those negative outcomes never happen. Actually, some good things happen. So look for the good that could come out of a situation or something in the future. Here's another one. Look inside yourself for the resources that you have that can bring about positive outcomes. You probably have quite a good set of resources inside of yourself Unfortunately, a lot of people don't think about that. They don't think about using those internal resources they have built up to make a difference and to choose optimism. And here's another one. Consider who you might include in specific situations that would enhance good results and that would provide valuable assistance there's something you can be optimistic about. Who could I include in what I'm doing that brings a certain level of skill or knowledge or experience and gives me a better chance of having a better outcome? Those are all things you can be optimistic about. And those are just a few ways that you can practice optimism. Okay, let's bring this together. If we can approach our lives with an optimistic mindset, then we have a huge advantage. And I'm going to give you three different ways that you can make optimism work for you. It's an EQ skill. It's a practice. It's something that we know will get us better outcomes. So how do we do that? Here's three different ways. As a matter of fact, there's four different ways. I gave you a bonus on this. But let's start with number one. Motivation and energy. An optimistic approach naturally enhances our internal motivation and generates more energy. The more we choose optimism, the more energy we will generate to do the things that we need to do and want to do. So that's number one, how optimism can really help you. Here's number two, options. An optimistic mindset frees our brains to come up with more options. It promotes a divergent thinking process that helps us to see greater possibilities and different ways of getting there. So think of more outside-the-box thinking, coming up with more options, being able to really think through a variety of different ways that might lead you to a better way to do something. That's number two in how optimism can really help you. Here's number three. Optimism engages your creativity, allowing you to be more innovative now, this enhances the potential for better solutions, better problem solving. If you can be more creative and more innovative, you are going to have a better chance of coming up with better solutions, which lead to better outcomes. 
Now, here's number four. Here's the bonus uh, way that optimism can help you. Optimism creates an emotional environment in our brain that allows us to access our higher cognitive functions much more easily. Now, what are those? Critical thinking, strategic thinking, abstract thinking, problem solving, consequential thinking. These are just some of those higher thinking processes that optimism helps to facilitate. Think about it. Have you ever been in a situation where you were very optimistic and it's like your whole brain kicks in and you find new and different ways of doing things? That's the options. And then you engage your higher level thinking, your critical thinking, strategic thinking, consequential thinking. So you're seeing how each of these options can fit into the situation and which one may actually be the best way to go forward. This is optimism at its best. When you think of optimism, don't think fake it till I make it. That simply isn't going to work. Optimism is not one of those things that you can fake. It comes across as disingenuous. It really doesn't work. Think of optimism as a choice. A choice to be more intentional about practicing optimism. Notice when I say practice optimism. You could start in pessimism. You could start in in a fairly pessimistic place, but by choosing to be more optimistic, looking at the future with hope and possibility, you have the opportunity to turn that around. The choice comes when you decide whether you will stay pessimistic or choose to practice optimism. Using the bullet points that we talked about earlier, will help you to practice optimism. And those were choose optimism over pessimism, look for the good that could come out of a situation, look inside yourself for resources that can bring about positive outcomes, and consider who you might include in specific situations that could bring you some really valuable assistance. Those are the bullet points I'm talking about. Let me close this out just on a personal note with a little bit of science sprinkled in. I tend to be an optimistic person. Some of that is based in my personality style, but there are many times in my life where I have been very pessimistic. As I learn more about neuroscience and emotional intelligence, I realize that we build patterns for ourselves that are reinforced every time we repeat that pattern. That is why you can change from pessimism to optimism. I know I did. In those times when I was experiencing significant pessimism, the way that I found my way to optimism was to change the old pattern to a new pattern. We literally create neural pathways in our brain, what I'm calling patterns, that we can change if we desire. One of the biggest challenges to making that happen is not to allow our brains to go on autopilot. Our brains love autopilot because it's easy and it's comfortable even if the outcomes we get are not necessarily what we want anything worthwhile takes effort practicing optimism has real value it enhances our energy it gives us options it engages our creativity and creates an emotional environment that is healthy and vital This is an EQ skill that is well worth developing. Thank you for joining us for this episode. 
If you have any questions about this week's episode, or maybe a suggestion for future episodes you'd like us to explore, please contact us through our website at eqfit.org. For more information and inspiration, connect with us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube at EQFit.